This video gives a number of worked examples of using the chain rule. So a previous video then gave an explanation of and derivation for the chain rule. And this video will focus on worked examples demonstrating the use of the chain rule, or sometimes it's called the function of a function rule. So here's an example. If you have a function h of x, which is a function f of another function g of x, then dh dx is given by df dg multiplied by dg dx. Or, in fact, if you have higher levels of nesting, so here you see f is a function of g and g is a function of k, then dh dx will be df dg times dg dk times dk dx. So example one then, find the derivative of h of x, obviously using the chain rule, where here h is f of g of x, f is defined as sec, and g is defined as 4x squared. So h is actually a sec of 4x squared. So we remind ourselves then of the chain rule. So dh dx is df dg times dg dx. So first of all then, let's do each of these derivatives in turn. So f is sec g. So df dg is given here. It's sine g over cos squared g. g is 4x squared, so dg dx is 8x. So now all I have to do is plug both of those into my chain rule formula. So I get dh dx is given here. It's sine g over cos squared g times 8x. And of course what I can do is I can recognize that g is 4x squared. It's given there. So wherever I have a g, I can, if I want, substitute in 4x squared, and so I get 8x times sine of 4x squared over cos squared of 4x squared. Example 2. Find the derivative of h of x, and you'll see here h is defined as a function of g, and g is a function of w, and w is a function of x, where the function f is cot 2g, the function g is w cubed plus 3w, and the function w is log 4x minus 2. So I want to find the derivative of this h. And if you were to look at the original function here, you're probably saying, yuck, that really does not look very nice. But if you break it down to what's f, what's g, and what's w, you'll find it's actually relatively straightforward. So the chain rule tells us that dh dx is df dg times dg dw times dw dx. So let's do each of those in turn. So f is cot 2g, and df dg is therefore minus 2 cos x squared 2g. g is w cubed plus 3w, so dg dw is 3w squared plus 3. And w is log of 4x minus 2, so dw dx is 4 over 4x minus 2. So you'll notice that each of these derivatives is relatively straightforward. And the fact that this expression up here looked pretty horrendous isn't a problem in terms of the differentiations that I have to carry out, which each of them is relatively straightforward. And now all I have to do is plug these answers into this formula, thus avoiding any difficult computation at any time. So dh dx is minus 2 cos x squared 2g times 3w squared plus 3 times 4 over 4x minus 2. Now obviously, if you want it all in terms of x, what you're going to do is you're going to say, all right, I happen to know what w is, is there, so I take that expression and I put it in there. I happen to know what g is, there it is. So I take that expression and I put it in there. Now you can do this, but uh, hopefully you will see that the final expression in terms of x really will be quite messy. Example 3. Find the derivative of f of x, where here f of x is cos of 2x cubed. And here you have to work out which is the function of a function. So I can see that I've got a basic cos g where g is 2x cubed. So I've actually identified the inner function by myself. So now, dh dx is going to be df dg times dg dx.
And I can write this down by inspection in this case. I don't really need separate boxes. So df dg is minus sine g, and dg dx is 6x squared. So my final formula, minus sine of 2x cubed times 6x squared. The key point here is with this original expression, I'm not told this is a function of a function. I have to work this out for myself and decide what I want to call f and what I want to call g. This example is even worse. So you see f of x is 2 tan e to the 4x to the 4 minus x squared. So clearly there's some form of function going on inside here, so I need to define it for myself. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to define f as 2 tan g, g as e to the v, and v as 4x to the 4 minus x squared. So I've broken this function down to be a nesting of three separate functions. Because now I can use the chain rule and all the corresponding uh, d um, derivatives are going to be simple. So the chain rule says dh dx is df dg dg dx dv dv dx. So now dh dx is going to be 2 sec squared g, so that's the derivative of f, times e to the v, that's the derivative of g, times 16x cubed minus 2x, which is the derivative of v. I can, of course, plug all of these back in terms of x, and the final expression is quite messy. But what you'll notice is even though the final expression is quite messy, the derivatives I had to do, which were of tan, of e to the v, and of this polynomial, were actually fairly straightforward. So you keep a clear head, clear definitions, and applying the chain rule is fairly easy. Example 5. Find the derivative of f of x, where it's 2 sine e to the x over x plus 2. So again, I need to discern that there are nested functions, and also here I'm going to need the quotient rule. So what I'm going to do is say here I've got 2 sine g, where g is e to the x over x plus 2, which clearly is a quotient. It's of the form u over v. So if I want to get dg dx, which my chain rule tells me I need df dg and dg dx, to get dg dx, I need the quotient rule. So dg dx is going to be v du dx minus u dv dx over v squared. Now I've done that quickly here, just to save time. So v is x plus 2, du dx is e to the x, and then I've got minus u, which is e to the x, times the derivative of x plus 2, which is 1. So you see I get minus e to the x all over x plus 2 squared. And if I rearrange all of that, this is what I get. dg dx is x plus 1 e to the x over x plus 2 squared. And now I can put this into my chain rule. So I get dh dx equals 2 cos of e to the x over x plus 2 times x plus 1 e to the x over x plus 2 squared. And if you're just wondering what's going on here, this particular term here is, of course, the derivative. So I've done ddg of f. So in summary, this brief resource has given a number of worked examples of using the chain rule. And there's an example of how the chain rule works, which um, I'm not going to derive on anymore.